practical uh, you know insight also into these uh, things um, so i kindly request you not to take my uh, individual sentences in uh, uh, you know uh, and then try to come to your own conclusion i will be talking in a flow and uh, even though i come from a research background uh, i felt that you know i should talk only more from the practical point of view uh, even to an academic uh, thing because ultimately it is you who are turning out a number of uh, civil engineers who are going to come into the industry and uh, um, what whenever i speak i would like to talk about the method as well as its uh, advantages as well as its practical limitations so kindly don't harp on the advantages alone or don't harp on the you know the limitations i would like to present it as it is like you know how in the past 35 years what i had felt towards non destructive testing so th thanks once again and uh, let me start the talk the various investigation methods are non destructive methods then uh, uh, partially destructive methods and load test because the code does not say you have to go and demolish a structure they say you do non destructive testing if the, that doesn't give you a very uh, conclusive evidence then go for some intrusive testing like code testing even that fails then they say you do a load test even if a load test fails they say that you know you need to do one more load test and then that fails you know you have to go for a uh, demolition and uh, what are the various non destructive tests that are commonly adopted in our country first is the rebound hammer test second is the ultrasonic pulse velocity test then the core drilling test to evaluate the equivalent cube compressive strength of concrete and then you have this durability based test like carbonation test half cell potential test evaluation of chlorides and ph through concrete powder samples and then you have resistivity test also then you have a proposcope survey for identifying cover and rebus and then some of the methods that are not uh, used extensively uh, and very limited knowledge is the coat repairing for loss in pre stress because we are having a number of uh, bridges in our country where the girders are of pre stress concrete uh, sometimes when we are called in to you know um, assess the condition of the concrete in those bridges then naturally the designer would like to know what is the level of pre stress that is prevailing now so this coat repairing method is generally used to find the loss in pre stress it may not be a very precise method but then uh, th there are institutions like scrc where they have got a considerable experience and now they can fairly give a good idea about the loss in the pre stress through the coat repairing method and then the other method is the flat jack technique for masonry structures so we are having a number of marine uh, number of uh, monumental structures number of uh, um, masonry structures where you know sometimes the stability check is uh, you know called upon so that time the designers are not very sure how to go about the uh, stability check for masonry structures and monumental structures and that time this flat jack technique can be used again as far as uh, this part of the country is concerned flat jack technique uh, scrc has a considerable experience and then now iit madras is also getting into it and they are also doing a, a few uh, practical field uh, studies uh, using the flat jack technique so these are the commonly adopted uh, you know test that are away, that are being uh, used in our country because when a client comes to you with a problem uh, then you need to solve the problem uh, so do while solving the problem uh, and while giving the rehabilitation methodology there should be some scientific basis on giving this rehabilitation methodology to arrive at that scientific basis all these tests are used Uh, so that that is purely from the consulting point of view and from problem solving point of view and some of the non destructive tests that are not very popular are thermal methods radiography stress wave propagation methods a number of paper, researchers are doing work on this number of papers are coming out but unfortunately all these methods are not being applied in a uh, large uh, way in the field the reason is the above methods are not popular due to lack of uh, physics knowledge on the part of us on the part of our structural engineers and it is our failure to work as a team with consultants with strong physics base because you are having impact echo we are having so many uh, you know equipments but then we can run it on the field but then uh, the interpretation of the results becomes an issue the interpretation of the issue uh, results uh, are not that good uh, due to the lack of physics knowledge and then we do not work with uh, people with strong physics base to understand uh, these things of course there are papers there are a number of researchers whether it is iit or uh, other major big uh, institutions people are doing research but it has not been carried forward to the field uh, 
like your uh, rebound hammer or ultrasonic or something so there is a very strong need uh, to develop this so with these methods we can get a much better idea about the condition of the structure so these are the non dissected tests that are not very popular i already listed out the methods that are quite commonly used now we'll go into uh, what i'll do is i'll split the talk into three parts in the first part i will do uh, the i'll uh, i will discuss the various non destructive methods the advantages and the disadvantages or the limitation i won't call it the disadvantages the limitations and the second uh, part of the my ta talk will be on where these things uh, the situations what leads what situations lead us to use these uh, tests and the third i will sum it up with the uh, some of the case studies which we have done over the past about 20 odd years so 